Hey everyone, Tracking Pat for part three of the Prototrack SLX Basics. And in this part, we're gonna actually cut the part and show how to use tracking and chip clear and a few other things. As you recall, this is the part that we're gonna make and I've got a piece of stock in there, the same one that I use to set up my tools. And you'll also notice if you look at the tool post right now, tool number three is still in the machine because that's the last tool that I told it about. So you don't have to switch to tool number one before you push go, it's gonna tell you to do it when it needs it, okay? So that's the first thing. The second thing is that uh, I might not have said this in the second part, if not, I still wanna go over it a little bit stronger to remember that when you touch your tools off, you're setting your Z part zero. So that's gonna be the same set point for your tools from here on out until you take that part out and change it. So if you were to change and put a different part in, then I would go to DRO mode, take one of my tools, like tool number one, face off the end of the part, say Z0, and then everything will be back on track to run properly, okay? In our case, this is all done, all right? So I am still in the mode here where I'm looking at the part, so I'm gonna get out of there, hit the mode key, go to run mode, and here I have the option of either starting at the beginning or starting at any event number in the program. Since we haven't cut anything yet, we're gonna start at the beginning. And one more thing I wanna say just for the sake of the fact that we're making videos here, I have a jumper on the door so that I can run it with the door open. Normally it would not be able to do that other than when you're in the manual mode, tracking mode, or the tool setup mode, okay? So I'm gonna push start and it tells me when I'm ready to push go. So I'm gonna do so and it's gonna to go to the six and six position. Now tool number three is still in there, but it's telling me here on the screen to put in tool number one, start the spindle, and then either choose tracking or CNC run. So we take tool number three off, and put tool number one back on. Start the spindle, and then I'm gonna use tracking to get started just because I always like to make sure I didn't make some sort of an oversight or a mistake, okay? So at this point it looks good, so I'm gonna leave tracking mode and go to CNC mode. Okay, now what I did right there is I was getting a little bit of a bird's nest because I wasn't quite cutting the chips well enough. So I wanted to also be able to show you how to do chip clear. And the way that we do that is you simply push stop, hit the tracking button, and then the jog stick can override its position. So I just jogged it away in X, moved it over in Z, shut it off, and now I'm getting my chips out of the way. Okay, now when I go back to resume what I was doing, I'm still in the run mode, so it'll remember where it was and take over. However, there's two ways to get there. If I just turn the spindle on and push uh, CNC run, then it's gonna move over there at the CNC run feed rate. So I'm gonna leave it in tracking when I do this because it's gonna be a faster way to get it over there and then I'm gonna switch back to CNC run. Okay, now there's one more place that I wanna use tracking and that's because this part's four inches long, it's very close to the chuck and I just wanna make sure that I'm not gonna cut the chuck jaws. Looks good to me.
Okay, so the first part is done with tool number one. It's gone home, shut off the spindle. It's telling me to put in tool number two, restart the spindle and either choose CNC run or tracking again. This is the part where normally I would stop, measure my material, make sure it's cutting the size. If it is not, I would go to my tool modifier and I would adjust it either in or out to get it to the right size. And then I would resave my tools and I would come back and instead of starting on event two, which is where the cycle begins, I would start and tell it, uh, instead of starting on event one, sorry, I would start on event two and it would ask me whether to start at the finish or the rough passes. I would say go right to the finish, recut that last part to bring it to size and then move on. In this case, we don't need to do that. So we're gonna go right into tool number two. So I'm taking tool number one off, putting in my groove tool. I'm gonna go to tracking. So I'm gonna hit stop, go to tracking and then turn my spindle on. Looks good to me. And there we have the groove all finished and the last thing we have to do is the threading. Now one thing about the threading, I always like to use tracking every time I start a new part or use a new tool just to make sure there's no errors. However, there is a point in threading where the machine has to take over in order to cut the thread to the right pitch using the RPM that I've programmed. So even though I go to stop right here and go to tracking, you're gonna see that there's gonna be a point where it actually moves by itself. And it'll go back to tracking as soon as it's done with the first cut. So you see, there's your first cut, and now it looks good to me. So one more time, CNC run, and let it finish. All right, perfect. So as you can see, we're at the end. It says run over. It's given me the choice of either starting at the beginning or any event in the program again. If I had to make another part just like this, I would just put a new one in the chuck, go to DRO mode, take one of my tools, establish where the end of the part is for Z0, push go and let it run. I wouldn't even need tracking the second time. So hopefully this is going to show you a good way of how to use not only tracking in the run mode, but chip clear in the run mode and how all the events go together. And uh, it should do what you need to learn, but uh, I do plan on making another video sometime in the future on doing inside work with boring and grooving and threading and things like that. But for now, this should get you on your way. Again, I'm Tracking Pat. Don't forget to look us up on YouTube, Instagram, and at trackmt.com. And as always, keep on tracking. Hey everybody, it's Tracking Pat, and if you enjoyed this last video, don't forget to smash the like button, leave a comment, follow along with us. If you want to see the next video, just check this one out over here. And otherwise, don't forget to subscribe so you can learn more about us. I'm Tracking Pat, and don't forget to keep on tracking.